Hey, you guys in capes. And rogues who are sneaky. Join Chris and Roger as we attempt to entertain the geeky. Guys, what's going on? What's up, Chris? Roger, how are you? Man, I got a Red Bull today. Yeah? I got the big guy here. Heck yeah. I mean, and I'm kind of jittery. I'm on my second monster right now, and I'm definitely jittery. Yeah? Yeah. How you feeling? Good. It's Good. cold as fuck outside. It's, so it's not that it's super frigid out there. It's that 40 degree weather is the nasty weather. It's true. Uh, well, though, I, I, so here's the thing. I, I'm colder at 40 to 50 degrees than I am at like 10 degrees. Absolutely. Because normally when you're at that 10 degree mark, it has been cold for a couple of days and you've gotten used to it. But when we hit that 40 degree mark, it's it, normally warmer but a couple of days before. That's the chill you to the bone cold. Yeah, it's bad. It's stupid. And it generally rains with that kind of weather. Just a little bit. And that's what sucks because that being wet and cold well, is I'm, disgusting. And they're talking about the possibility of snow today. Yep. It was so, flurrying on my way here. Was it? Yeah. Well, you live in DeSoto, so. Well, it was like most of the way here. It was flurrying. I don't want snow. I hate snow. I like snow. It was just flurries, though. It was nothing serious. So, yeah. There's that. What's the weather like where you guys are at? California, you guys give us a lot of love. I'm sure the weather's beautiful you there. You noticed that, too? Yeah. Well, I was yeah. looking last night, and I was like, California loves the fuck out of us. Uh, Europe does, too, though. Yeah, but I don't care about Europe. I do. I mean, you do. But we get, yeah, we get a majority of our downloads in California, which is crazy. Yeah, um, I don't know anybody in California. I know. You don't know anybody either. I know a couple of people there. Do you? Yeah, not not a lot. You know, like one guy? I know. That's not true. I know a guy. I know I, a couple of guys. I know like three or four people in California. <laughs> yeah, I know like two or three. I don't know if, I might know four. I don't know if they moved, both moved down there or not. Hmm. I don't know. Hmm. California's supposed to be beautiful, though. Is it? I've so, never been. You know a movie that we haven't talked about that's getting ready to come out soon? Black Panther? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was about to say, we have, I don't know how to feel about this movie. Um, so I actually was reading something today, this morning, that said uh, the villain in it, Michael B. Jordan's character, is one of the best movies, or one of the best villains that Marvel has done. Uh, is it better than that <laughs> fucking computer guy from Civil War or whatever? I Winter mean that, Soldier. that that was a joke, but yeah. this is like a, this is legit like an actual villain. Well, like honestly, Marvel doesn't really do in their movies other than Spider Man. They don't really do actual actual villains. Like think about it, the Avengers who they fight. Like there was Loki, but Loki wasn't like the guy they fought. Well, and Loki is such a <clears throat> teeter totter character. Yeah, he's still in the middle. Mm -hmm. That uh, I wouldn't necessarily classify him as a villain. He's a chaotic neutral character. Uh, Red Skull. Red Skull was an actual villain. They did fight him. Um, uh, the whoever the Dark Elf is in Thor. I finally saw Thor Ragnarok. It's a good movie. It's pretty good. Uh, so yeah, there's the Dark Elf in the Thor movie. But yeah, like I, thinking about it, like Batman movies, it's always like Batman squares off against a villain. Yeah. Like boom, there's one guy, the villain. Marvel movies just kind of tell stories. It's it's a little less black and white in the Marvel movies, I feel. Now, that being said, we've had one villain orchestrating a whole lot for a very long time. Who's that? Thanos. Thanos hasn't really orchestrated the damn thing. He's kind of been like sitting in a chair going, You yep. got my Chitauri. Yep. Because that well, happened. That wasn't his That wasn't his alien force. Uh, I think they belonged to Thanos in somehow, some way. I don't, that wasn't Thanos invading Earth. That was it was Thanos giving him to Loki. Yeah, yeah. So ultimately, it was Thanos wanting to get his hand in the cookie jar. He just wants to court death. Yeah, but he was putting his hand in the cookie jar here, and now we're actually going to see that Thanos do you, fight. Do you think that uh, Infinite War or Avengers Four, whatever the fuck, is Infinity War? Yeah, whatever is going to uh, have Deadpool just swoop in and save the day by stealing death away from Thanos? No. No, because um, the deal's not officially happened yet. I actually read an interview with Kevin Feige or Fig or however you say his name. Kevin, I created the MCU, so yeah. I rock. Uh, and basically he was saying, look, he's like, we're not even concerned with what's going to happen with the Fox properties yet because the dotted line's not been signed. The deal's not finalized. Except they're already talking about putting X-Men and Fantastic Four in Phase 4. They want them in there, and that's one of the things. Like, they have to be mindful of that, Okay. Um, but he's like, look, through 2019, he's like, it doesn't matter because we have everything booked up through then. But they're already doing reshoots on the X-Men properties to make it fit in the Marvel Universe. Make it fit better. 
Yeah. Okay, so it's not it's not set in stone yet, and that's probably one of the clauses that's built into the deal. Like, hey, you got to let us take care of reshoots so that we can make things work. Um, but he's like, you know, I'm not super worried about these characters and these properties yet because they're not mine yet. They're not mine. I don't own them. But that's, I mean, that's a fair point, though, because let's say something happens. Fox pulls out because they're like, eh, we don't need this. Um, no, Fox does need this. They do, and I'm not denying that. But if for some reason they decide that they don't need it or want it, uh, it's it would be foolish for Marvel to have all these plans for these properties and invest a bunch of time and resources into it when it could potentially fall through. They got they got the Wonder Boy back in Spider Man, so um, I think in working with that and working with the properties that they already have, they've got a full plate. <sighs> And they definitely do through 2019 because we know all the movies that are coming out. Yeah, is Spider-Man still Marvel's biggest selling comic book? Like, like, like I, I don't mean of all time. I mean a monthly. Is I, Spider-Man still? Probably you should Google that. I, I, um, I, that's what I was going to do. But yeah, I mean, it, the property's always historically done well for them. And then when you talk Not about... Not always. They were, it was close to being canceled. When you talk about all the prop, like all the stuff that comes along with Spider-Man, all the different Spider-Men and women, uh, yeah, I think they do very well. I'm looking it up now. He's Googling. Keep going. I and Well, now I'm just kind of watching this because I'm interested to see who the best-selling Marvel property is. Uh, it's going to be a minute. Mean, i got to go through some shit. I would just Google what's the best Marvel, uh, what's the best Marvel comic book, best-selling Marvel comic book. Okay, okay. And then we'll go from there. Um, but yeah, because X-Men has phases where it does really well and then it does nothing. Uh, it, I think it depends on who's writing. I think the Avengers series typically sell well, depending on which which DC Avengers series. takes over a declining market. Which comic book? Which comic sold best in 2017? Uh, looking for the list: Marvel Legacy number one, Dark Knight Metal, Doomsday Clock, Peter Parker. Yep, Spectacular Spider-Man. Uh, Batman, Batman, The Flash, The Flash, Metal number two, Secret Empire. Huh. Huh. So DC's got a nice foothold in there. DC's doing but it apparently. One of the one of the things that they did that I think Marvel's trying to get back to is all of DC stuff is canon. Uh, it depends on yeah, I guess. No, it is. Because, we we have the pizza analogy with Marvel that's still enacted. Yeah, but 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 DC's done like you know the new Fifty Two, then going back and they now had, with they Batman had to go back. Metal right? things are getting all fuckered up. They're just saying once again that hey everything's canon. Dark Knight's metal. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Look at what we can do, everybody. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm still stuck on this. Yeah, no, I think it's time to stop scrolling through that. I'm just amazed uh, uh, that 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 I don't know what Marvel Legacy is. I don't know. I I think isn't that their legacy? Uh, is that them uh, legacy numbering on their comics? Is it or is it them going back to? Is that the one where they're actually going back to? Uh, the pizza being two separate pizzas. And it could it could very well be that too. I'm um, looking it up right now. What is Marvel Legacy? No, uh, I was I've had this dreaded fascination recently with leather bound books. I want a full library of leather bound books. Um, and I was looking at uh, the Harry Potter sets, and to get that in all leather bound because there's not a lot of big companies that make that, so you're generally buying it from an individual who does a custom order. It's like six hundred dollars to get a full set of the Harry Potter books. You know, I would just buy the Harry Potter books and be happy. I don't need leather bound. I want them in leather. I just want a full leather bound library. So it is. Marvel Legacy is looks like it is the return to uh, the original. What is it? Numbering. Uh, well, it's Earth six one six. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think I think that's what it's going to. Because here's the, here here we go. It begins at the dawn of the human race and ends with the child's prayer. In between, empires fall, mysteries brew, secrets are revealed. Quests are undertaken and legends are forged. All leading up to the dramatic return you've been waiting for. And one you've been dreading. Bum, bum, bum. This just came out in September. Yeah. Well, Jason was talking about that because he had talked about that on Nerd News. Yeah. I'm just saying, that's what Marvel Legacy is. It's interesting. Yeah. It is very interesting, to say the least. So yeah, it looks like Marvel's going back to everything, being the way it should be. I think that's a smart business decision. Is it? Yeah. I mean, you're you're now taking because because we've been forming the past decade. You've been forming the Marvel comic series to be more like the MCU. 
Well, at first, at first, that wasn't the case. That it was 2012 that that really started to happen with the success of the Avengers movie. That's when it really started to take shape, and they were basically integrating the MCU into comic form, and that was stupid. <laughs> Really? Yeah. I don't think so. I think it was, I think it was abso- a great as, as, idea. As a reader, it was so yeah. stupid. As a reader for you who's been a fan of Marvel for so long, but as a guy that's like, hey, I like the Avengers movie, let me go see what these comics are about. Oh, look, they actually match what I saw on the screen, as opposed, to, as opposed to, hey, why is Nick Fury white? Hey, this is a molestation of what's been done over the past 50, 60 years. You can't, but you can't bitch about the movies being different. And, 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 and I don't bitch about that. I do. I'm totally cool with it. It's its own thing. I, it I enjoy that. It has been. No, no. I mean, now it's its own thing because the comics are no longer trying to follow suit. I they it. I think it was a decision that uh, bit them in the ass because it's not new readers that support the hobby. It's existing readers. New readers can come on and they can pick up. And when there are good stories, a new reader can come in and be like, oh, wow, this is awesome. Um, when you're just trying to match the shit that's on screen, I don't think that's the case. Oh, ma. Oh, uh-huh. uh-huh. uh, my thought is this: Marvel, Marvel makes money. They're owned by the mouse. It doesn't matter. What matters is DC is kicking their ass. Apparently, that's what's interesting. And that that is interesting because their movies are their not movies doing are well. not good at all. I mean, the movies are doing well, I guess, but yeah, they're not that great. They're not. They're not like Avengers money. Oh, they're man. not Oprah money rich. Okay. So David Harbor did an interview recently and was talking about um, how he can like. Uh, Christian Bale's Batman or or Val Kilmer's Batman. I'm probably uh, I'm misquoting him there. Hold on, hold on. I have to think of an interpretation. Or no, Val it was Michael. It was Ma- Michael Keaton's Batman. Oh, Michael, Mr. Mom, Batman. Uh, so it was Michael Keaton's Batman or Christian Bale's Batman. He's like, I can like Heath Ledger's Joker and Jack Nicholson's Joker. He's like, and I don't have to like the other Jokers. And it was like a direct dig <laughs> at, Jared at Jared Leto. And I'm like, you were like, mm. fuck you, David. <laughs> well, I. I, I'm, I'm, I'm like reading this and I'm like, wow, that probably, cause he was in Suicide Squad, you know, he had a pretty minimal role in it, but he was in it. And I'm just like, you're kind of shitting where you eat a little bit, bro. No, cause you can be, you can be part of a thing and not care for an actor's performance in said thing. Uh, it, I don't think it was the actor's performance. I think it was, remember how we've talked about studio interference? Like we've beat that into the except, ground. Except, hold on. Hold on. Like you said, he was David Hayter was part of Suicide Squad, so he uh, might have seen some things that we didn't see. And maybe at the end of the day, he was like, you know what? It's like it's like any other fucking job you go to. You just because you like your job and you like and you like your manager doesn't mean you like all of your coworkers. That's fair. And you don't like the job that they do, and you're like, fuck that guy. This guy that I had before him was better. Yeah, I I, I guess there is a little bit of uh, artistic integrity that was compromised. I guess it's because you, with studio interference. I guess it's because you just love Jared Leto. That I you actually can't... I liked the Joker performance that we saw. It was in there an awkward amount, and I've I've said that several times. It's not the best movie, right? But I'm not talking about the movie. I'm not saying the movie's good. I'm saying you like Jared Leto. I like this performance. You, you have stepped up and said that you think Jared Leto is one of the best Jokers. Ever I do done. believe that. And anyone that disagrees with you and says I don't know. Chris, uh, Heath Ledger or, Ro- or, or Romeo Caesar or Jack Nicholson was a better Joker, and you're like, no, fuck you. That's not technically been the case. Really? Yes. Because Heath Ledger's Joker was better than Jared Leto's Heath Joker. Ledger's Joker was different. Uh, um, Jack Nicholson's Joker was better than it was different. It, like, Mark here, Hamill's here's, Joker. Here's the thing. We've gotten different iterations of the Joker. Yes. And I'm okay with that. Um, but one of the... And I've... I've mentioned this scene several times on the show the scene where jared leto makes i forget the lackey's name kisses ring and then sits in the guy's lap and he's like i could tell you meant it i that was so the joker and it was so invasive and stuff like i loved it and i was completely sold on the character at that point like i wanted it to be good and like that's what kind of really sold me on his portrayal of the joker yeah yeah well, uh, to be truth be told, guys, I'm 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 gonna bust Chris's fucking bubble here. He was sold on the Joker the minute he found out Jared Leto was playing the Joker. I was excited about it the whole time. You were yes. you were jumping up and down I like was, like Tom Cruise on Oprah's fucking couch. I was stoked about it, and uh, I was stoked about the fact that he met the axe and like that he was getting so into the character. Absolutely. And now we're getting Leonardo DiCaprio as on a Joker solo. Maybe. I don't I mean, know. I don't know happen. if that's been completely green lighted. It'll happen. We'll see. Because technically, Jared Leto's still. 
The Joker in the uh, DCEU. DC. Yeah, but the, but the Joker's solo movie doesn't need to take place in the DCU. It no, no, have it do- to. no, it doesn't. And that's one of the things that we've talked about on the show as well. And in fact, I'd prefer that it didn't. I'm going to be honest with you. I, I'd prefer that the, they just told solo movies. And if DC takes that approach, much like they're doing with their animated movies, I'd be so happy. It would be really interesting. Um, because you could still have your DCU going. Yeah. But hey, guess what? Here is here's a, a fun flick. Here's a fun flick. Yeah. I don't I don't disagree with that. Like at first I was really sketchy on the idea because we have all of these shared universes. But now I'm just like, oh, a good movie would be fun to see. Thank it, you. Thank you for joining my cause. So Marvel, stop with the shared universe. No. DC, stop with the shared Marvel universe. Marvel can have a shared universe and it could be good. But they also they shouldn't let that deter them from doing movies outside of that. But they are. Correct. But you can also, you can go watch Ant-Man and be totally happy and it doesn't necessarily detract from anything that you might watch in the no, MCU. But Ant-Man, Ant-Man and the Wasp looks good. It looks fucking awesome. It looks really, like the scene where, in the trailer where he shrinks the building and just, whoop. Picks it up. Picks it up. And... I, I love the scene where the Wasp runs across the blade of knives. Yeah. It, it looks so cool. The blades of knives, rather. Who is she? I can't, um, I can never just, think of her name. It looks good, man. It looks fun. Uh. I thought the first Ant-Man movie, though, was a breath of fresh air. Courtney loved the first Ant-Man movie. It was a good flick. It was a lot of fun. Did I loan you that one, or did that... Did you... No, it was on cable. Oh, okay. It was on the cable. Yeah, because that was a good movie. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Oh, yeah. Even Evangeline Lilly. That's her name. I don't know what else she's been in besides Ant-Man and the Wasp. She was in The Hobbit, Real Steel. Oh, she was in The Hurt Locker. The Hurt Locker. That's a good movie. Little Evil. I didn't, uh, yeah. Real Steel's a cool flick, too. Real Steel is a cool flick. It's Rock'em Sock'em Robots. It is. The Long Week. With she Hugh really Jackman. hasn't been in a lot. Oh, dude. So, there's this new movie, come, uh, the new Crocodile Dundee movie. That's not a movie. What is it? It's a fucking, it's a fucking advertisement for, for tourism down in Australia. I thought it was a movie. No. Because there's a date. No. Google it. No. Like it's it's a I joke. Just, I just watched the trailer. Yeah. Remember when we talked about this uh, on, on one of those phone calls, and uh, you were all like, "That's stupid," and I was like, "But yeah, it's not the real thing. It is an advertising with to get tourism excited, to get people tourism to oh, did... going to Australia. Okay, because uh, Danny McBride and um, Hemsworth are part of the Australian 